Um, maybe if we could just kind of put it in a, a nutshell. There's a wonderful story that I heard about you at the White House yes. with Jimmy Carter. And this just goes to speak of the man who has decided he will live life by his own terms. He will do what is in his heart to do. And he doesn't worry about what the person next to him is doing. Yes. I, uh, I was at a dinner in Chicago with Johnny Johnson and the governor of Illinois who were there. And we had Cornish hen <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, we, here, here's a governor, here's Johnny Johnson here. And, you know, you're just looking at the etiquette, you're putting this arm down there, and you're trying to get this chicken <laughs> with this one hand. And, <laughs> and, and, and across the table from me sat Johnny Johnson. And Johnny Johnson sat across the table, and he got his, his, his Cornish hand up there. He sat down across the leg, he took that leg and took that leg off. <laughs> <laughs> and he sat there and started eating that chicken while talking to the governor. Uh -huh. right? And he ate that chicken, and he, he ordered a Coke, and, uh, and, and the lady brought him a Coke. You know how you get that Coke in between that finger, there with them greasy fingers? <laughs> and he drank that Coke and sat it there, and he ate that gorgeous chin. And everybody down with them knives trying to get this <laughs> chicken, and he can't eat it, right? He got finished, he stood back and said, ah, that was good. <laughs> he enjoyed himself, right? And I said, <laughs> and I said, and I said to me, you know, to myself, that's what I want to be. I want to do what I want to do and, and to, for me and not for, for nobody else. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and after that point, I, uh, I'm a, a lacquer of Tabasco sauce, and I take my Tabasco sauce wherever I go. Uh, course, and at first my wife was a little flurry. She said, why do you take Tabasco? Because I want it, because I like it. And I'm taking it. Who don't like it? Too bad. I'm W. James Scott. You do what you want to do. So, uh, and then we, then we got invited, Clarence Barnes and I got invited to the White House. Uh, I'll talk about the windfall profit tax. And while sitting at the White House, Jimmy Carter sitting across the table, uh, and I pulled out my Tabasco sauce and set my Tabasco sauce on the table, and he was the first one grabbed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what it tells me is that they want to do it, but they're bashful. They don't want to do it. All right, and, uh, and and that's not me. I, I don't want to do what nobody else want to do. If you want to do what I do, that's fine. But I'm going to do what I want to okay. do. Okay. And 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 that's what that's what happens. And I think you got to do that also when it comes to business. Because one incident in business I want to want to tell you about is I when I first my, by my first bus, mm -hmm. I went to the bank and I wanted to know uh, could he finance this bus for me. Uh, well, I had in my mind and I had all, I had it laid out in terms of how I was going to enter the bus business and how I was going to crack it wide open. I knew that, you know. Mm -hmm. But so, but the, the guy, the loan officer said, Jim, I don't think that uh, you can make any money in the bus business. And I said, well, well, why? Well, he said, after he was in last week, uh, we called Bordner and O.D. Anderson and George Q. Uh, these were bus companies. And these all, would be your competitors. My competitors. And they said you could not make any money. They said they can take it. They can handle everything in, in, in the bus business. There was no room for anybody else. So they didn't finance my bus. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, and the thing is right here is that if you are, if you are a marginal kind of guy uh, that where they're going to tell you that you can't make money in the bus business and you're going to say, well, OK, I can't make money in the bus business, so I'll do something else. But that, they just, I just got started. Right. It didn't make <laughs> me any different. I knew what I could do. I knew what I was going to do. All right. And uh, of course, I continue to to uh, uh, to uh, look for financing and I finally got it. I finally got it. And, and, and what happened, and I'm going to tell you how, what happened. I think that any business you got to go in, before you go into it, you, you, you know you got competitors. You have to know before you get there how you're going to wreck this business. You have to know that. You have to, that's what you got to think out. That's your business plan. It ain't what you can do with grass and stuff. It's how you're going to do it. In the, bus like business, in the bus business, I knew that for me going into the bus business, I had thought for, for a long time that if I had some buses, I would put the television in them. That's in back in the 50s when TV had just come out not too long ago. And I thought that was my idea. I said, I got an idea that nobody else had, right? And, uh, and when I went to Germany in 1956, what you know, I get on a bus and what's on there? TV. A television. <laughs> all right? And it just blew my mind. They stole my idea. <laughs> but you knew you were on the right I track. Had. But that was okay because I came back and I bought buses and I put televisions on them, and I, my buses were the only buses in the north, in, in northeast United States that had televisions on them. Wow. And I had all the bus companies 
scrambling like I don't know what, trying to find some TV. <laughs> we, we, was, we was getting called all over this place. I mean, we just had, in fact, I, just, I was buying buses every time I turned around, but we couldn't keep up with the demand. Wow. Right? I cracked it open because I knew what I had to do to do that. Now, wh the reason that was so easy to do was because the, the, the black people before that did not have the opportunity to ride new buses. They were always sent the raggedy buses. Mm -hmm. And anybody, any black who bought a bus, they bought an old bus from those guys who, was, who, who had got to finish with it mm -hmm. and bought them new buses and sold it to, uh, to some, uh, some, some black guy somewhere. And then he would try to get that bus and try to make money and consequently be breaking down mm -hmm. every time we turn around. So therefore, then we, we earned the stigma <laughs> of blacks that if you get on the bus, you ain't, you, you ain't gonna make it, your bus gonna break down. So the buses couldn't go anyplace. And I knew that I could not be that kind of guy. I could not get a bus and go in under those circumstances because mm -hmm. they already had me stigmatized. So I had to be different. I bought new buses, brand new buses. And when I did, it blew everybody's mind. <laughs>